is an E46 M3 that's come in for an inspection to service at Reader's Choice. Something that didn't sound quite right with this engine, just sounded a little bit different, not as crisp as they normally are. So uh, we were wondering if there was a head gasket failure, so the customer authorised us to carry out a compression test during the inspection to work. So we're going to watch a video now and show what happened. So we're going to get straight into the compression test and then later on move in to show what happens during a head gasket replacement. The compression test now, whilst the engine is apart and the spark plugs are out for the inspection to service. Probably about 140. Yeah, yeah. 140, 140 PS. 95, yeah. So that is low compression. So we've got an issue there on cylinder number two. And this one's low as well. Yeah, so 110 now. One thirty, a little bit low. One twenty, so that one's a little bit down as well. One fifty. Okay, so that one's pretty good. So that one's good along with the first one, but you do unfortunately have a head gasket leak between cylinders two and three, and probably between four and five as well, I'm afraid. So making good progress on this E46 M3 head gasket uh, replacement. As you can see, we've got the engine bay stripped down, so we've got quite a lot of components off. Water system, oil system is drained, and the radiator hoses are disconnected. Thermostat housing's off. Airbox, air inlet manifold, water rail that goes along the side of the cylinder head, and the one that goes into the back of the water pump, disconnected from the heater matrix pipes. Uh, rocker cover is off, vanos is off, sprockets are off, chain is loose, chain guides out and also the camshafts are now removed with the genuine BMW special tools. Next up is to remove the exhaust manifolds, disconnect those and we won't be far off then actually uh, undoing the cylinder head bolts in the correct order as per BMW's instructions and then lift in the cylinder head for the first time. We can see over here some of the items that we take off during the process. They're laid out on an organizing system. So we've got inlet cam, exhaust cam, sprockets, caps. The caps are marked E and A. E is uh, Einlass, which is inlet, and A, which is Auspuff, which is German for exhaust. And then we've got various bolts that are connected, are kept in separate sections, um, and some other items that will go into little boxes to make sure they're kept together. Various, various other parts of the rocker cover, um, exhaust gas output there, or the input, sorry, for the um, air emissions pump, water pump pulley, thermostat housing, lifting bracket, these are the throttle body sets, Vanos gearbox bolts here, various O-rings and spark plugs, coils, and then the Vanos units kept in boxes, uh, bags to make sure they're safe and uh, steady, not going to get any dirt on them. The rest of these items are going to go for washing and cleaning before we do the build-up process later on. Cylinder head has now been removed, which was a straightforward process once the head bolts have been undone in their correct position. And we get our first look at the engine block. We'll go over to the head and have a look in a minute. But we're gonna make sure that the engine block hasn't suffered any issues where the gasket had been blowing, which is basically in between the cylinders. They make black marks when the compression jumps between the cylinders. And we wanna make sure that it's not pitted the um, engine block in any way. Then we'll take the dowels out of the, of the engine block and start a cleaning process on that area. And I just having a look at the cylinder head, which is here upside down. We get our first look at the front, cylinder number one and cylinder number six at the back. We can clearly see the head gasket is split, but especially between cylinders two, which is here and three over here, big gap there between the gasket, not so bad there. And then between four and five, massive gap totally missing and then um, five to six is also split as well just going to lift this gasket off the cylinder head to show exactly how bad it is it's the first time it's come off as you can hear because it's stuck down it's an mls so it's a multi-layer steel three-piece head gasket which we're just going to put against the white background of the wall and if we sort of twist the head gasket i suppose you're going to see there you go there's a big gap there that's between cylinders two and three. We've got a gap appearing, oh, total breakage between cylinders one and two, where that drip just came from. 
Uh, three to four is actually still intact. Four to five is completely gapped and five to six is completely gone. So this is one of the worst ones we've seen for a long time. There is out of five joins, we've got four of them are completely gone through. It's only the very middle one, which is hanging on for dear life. So no wonder the car was sounding a little bit odd, um, started to make a little bit of a pinking noise and um, uh, was probably down on power. So once this is all dealt with and back together, it's gonna to be quite surprising how well this car now drives. These are all the parts laid out for the S54 head gasket job that we're going to be fitting. Uh, laid them out in roughly how they would be on the vehicle, front of the car up here, rear of the engine up here. So we've got the inner camshaft hub sprocket bolts, which are the new torque star ones from BMW compared to the old socket cap ones that can come loose and snap. The outer gearbox hex bolts for the Vanos unit, Vanos steel gasket for the body, thermostat housing, O-rings, water pipe, O-rings for the water pump, um, ceiling rings for the Vanos high pressure pipe, the timing chain tensioner upper guide, uh, which actually we can show you now the old one, which is actually quite common for them to snap. We found this one in two pieces. So these always get changed as a matter of course, even if they're not snapped, that we find them worn. So we like to change those ones at the same time. And the ceiling ring for the bolt that goes through there. Then we've got the actual head gasket itself, which like I say is an MLS head gasket. That's um, obviously going to replace the damaged one, which is the whole reason for doing this job. But it's not just a head gasket job. Lots of people think you are just going to change the head gaskets and maybe the head bolts. Um, there are actually, when you think about it, probably a hundred individual components there. And uh, it's completely resealing the top end of the engine, whether it be air, water, any sorts of fluid that are, or oil that are going through the ways of the engine. It's making sure that they're sealed, including fuel areas as well, so that you never have to revisit that. It's quite a comprehensive package and make sure that um, you're not going to get a failure elsewhere, which could have been easily rectified whilst the cylinder heads off. So we like to do everything once and correct once only. Then rocker cover gasket, so it's the outer perimeter gasket plus the six ceiling rings for the spark plug tubes and the outer nut seals as well. And then on the inlet side, we've got the throttle body to cylinder head oval o-rings and also the water rail o-rings that go onto the head uh, we've got timing chain guide tensioner bolt o-ring just there or ceiling ring and also the fuel injector and the air tube pipe o-rings as well camshaft sensor o-rings for the inlet and the uh, outlet throttle position sensor o-ring as well then we've got the exhaust output um, which is on the cylinder head, the sort of little EGR or the secondary air pump area. Exhaust manifold gaskets, time and chain tensioner ceiling ring. That one there is the drain ceiling ring for the water drain, the coolant drain on the engine block. Then we've got the drain down tube O-rings, which go for the banjo bolt on the rocker cover. Um, another O-ring there for the breather output on top of the rocker cover. Um, ceiling rings at the back of the cylinder head which is how you access the rocker shafts, set of new head bolts, and also genuine BMW oil filter kit. So the cylinder head's been away to the engine machine shop and they do a chemical bath first of all, which is where it goes in a hot wash and comes out looking nearly new. Uh, all bare aluminium gets rid of the carbon and oil deposits that have built up over the years, mainly on the inside, which we'll see in a minute. Also do a straightness check, which is where they check the top or the ceiling face of the head, and then do a pressure test for all the coolant waves to make sure there's no loss or cracks anywhere. And then finally finish with a resurface, which is basically a skim, which is what um, you might hear people call skim. And you can see the reflection of that, where this surface is now perfectly flat, where they've taken off a very, very minor amount, the most smallest amount needed. Normally start with something like three thousandths of an inch. Sometimes you might need to go a second pass if it's not completely taken off certain areas around the um, combustion cylinder area. But that's all done, completely smoothed off. And now we're just gonna turn it over just to show you the inside because we send them away with the caps fitted, the inlet and exhaust camshaft caps. So we're gonna put this down onto our clean carpet, which is totally safe to rest on. So they go fully away with the cam caps in there. So these get clean because these are obviously heavily um, carboned up otherwise. All the valves are fully cleaned now and the top spring plates for the valves. Let's just turn the lights on. 
and uh, the rockers fingers and the rocker shafts as well the shafts normally are heavily deposited and therefore the fingers don't normally slide along when you take the springs out so we send them with the springs as well so everything's nice and clean and even the very front vanos bridge as well is all assembled um, so it all got washed in the uh, industrial chemical bath so getting ready to do a final inspection of this area and um, what we call a blowout so um, during the resurfacing process the aluminium chips which come off the bottom of the cylinder head sometimes will get stuck in various little oil ways and coolant ways so we need to clean every single one out meticulously before we get ready to put this cylinder head back onto the engine. Like I said in the last video, we clean this out, what we call blowing it out, because the surface resurfacing process always puts little bits of aluminium chip everywhere. And although it, you can't see any of those, when it comes back from the machine shop, it's always looking great. You'll always find small little pieces, which is what we're finding in there when we're putting compressed air through all the uh, airways, through the waterways and through the oilways. And we wanna make sure we get that out because these are the, the small little differences that make a big difference because if you don't do that, all this is gonna stick in the oil pump or get stuck in the Vanos area and then cause massive problems later down the line, life and the car is not gonna last very much longer, even after having a head gasket. So it really does need to be done. And especially because we've just found this massive piece just come out of one of the waterways. So we were cleaning out cylinder number five, blowing compressed air through this hole here. And from this hole shot out this huge piece of, uh, aluminium which is obviously a rolled sort of chip from the cutting of the resurfacing and that is so big that obviously it wasn't visually seen it only came out with compressed air it came out of that gap there if that hadn't been found that had gone through the waterways got stuck in the water pump be churned up maybe caused some issues with the thermostat housing and who knows where it would have ended up next but great to see that sort of thing coming out and that's why we spend a lot of time making sure these are really clean before we put them together so cylinder heads all cleaned out now up on the top and through all the oilways, airways and the waterways and getting ready to put that onto the engine. Engine blocks also being cleaned up, dowels are out. We've used a specialist carbon cleaner to clean the tops of the pistons as best as we can access. Let's take some of the carbon deposits off and clean the block so it's got a relatively flat surface as best as possible to um, receive the new head gasket. New head gasket is now fitted and also the BMW Dry Bond 1209 as per the instructions underneath the gasket between the engine block and the timing case faces on the joints just in those two places. Then the cylinder head's got a very special torque procedure. I'm just going to give an example of what happens with a snap-on digital tech angle digitally torquing uh, the cylinder head bolts. They have to be done in order, so we have a, an order sheet of how it happens. So cylinders one, two, and then they do opposing five, six, seven, nine, ten. 11, 12, and then you keep going until you basically start from the middle and spread out. And uh, it's a three stage torque process. So 30 Newton meters initially to get it seated, then a 90 degree turn, and then a final 90 degree turn. That's all done with digital snap on tech angle. And now all that process is done. The cylinder head is finally bolted down tight. We can carry on with the rest of the work. So inlet side is built up now, throttle bodies are on with new seals and gaskets, fuel rail and air divider rail, also the water pump um, gasket which holds on to the thermostat housing and the o-rings for the tubes at the back and also the water rails that go from the water pump to the cylinder head. Inlet manifold is on as well with the correct clips. We don't go for the Jubilee style, we always stick with the BMW ones because they look perfect and are correct and they don't interfere with the throttle uh, actuation then as well. Exhaust side is built up as well, so that's new exhaust manifold gaskets, exhaust manifold is on with the nuts, uh, the uh, air emissions pump outlet is on, heat shields are correctly back in line as well, cams are in, so valve shims are also in there as well, we'll later on do the valve clearances once we've got the Vanos system built up, but shims are in, everything has been oiled before the cams go in um, correctly inlet and exhaust and we've got this which is what we're showing you in the video mainly on this clip it's the bmw special tool for safely and evenly compressing the camshafts against the valve springs uh, whilst you then put the caps on and put all the nuts on so it's a cam gear system which is very clever it supports the camshaft in two locations one there and one there and then it's a rotating cam device so as you turn the cam over it then presses down, holds the camshaft evenly because the cams are hollow and effectively if you don't use a special tool, there is a risk that they could snap. So we always use that and now that's been finished, we can remove that tool there. 
Sprockets are on the end of the camshaft and the cam hub bolts have been renewed. These are the new torque star ones which replace the socket cap ones which used to break. Also got the new chain guide upper one there because that was found in two pieces. They commonly break as well. And the manifold, the wiring clips here are all present and correct for down onto the Vanos plug which is later going to go on. So we're getting ready to put the helical gear sets in, take that tool off, put the other timing tool on which goes in and holds the cams correct. When the inlet one comes round the holes will be visible, we can time the cams and then work out about getting the Vanos system on next. So we're nearing completion now, as you can see a lot more is built up, we've still got engine visible so we still need things in like radiator hoses, fan, fan cowling, airbox, inlet um, and pollen filter housings and things but it's all coming together very nicely, looking neat and clean as we reassemble and very soon we'll be going for a first start. So the M3 is back together and you can see the engine bay is fully fitted, we still need to do a clean in the area but it's up to temperature now, we've carried out a first run, very happy with everything, how it's sounding and we're going to do a Vanos test using the BMW ISTA diagnostic system to make sure everything's fine. This video is being sped up, so you're watching this in four times speed. There we go, so everything passed. The main item that we want to see is Vanos system okay. All actual values conform to specified values, so thumbs up, that passed. Just to give you an idea of what this is, so we've got an idea of relative timing up here on inlet and exhaust for advanced and retired. Those are the degree markings that it reached. Uh, leak deviation is just in what's ha happening inside the Vanos unit around the piston areas, making sure there's no great leak. Anything over about five will fail on that. Um, and then the response time from the solenoid valve. So four solenoid valves which are operated by the coil pack. Anything over 500 milliseconds would fail, but they've come in all within spec. So we're very happy that not only is the Vanos in good health, but also the timing that we've carried out with the BMW S54 Special Tools has worked. And now that car can go out on road test. So what we like to do before handing the car back is do a compression test now the head gasket work has been done. hundred and fifty PSI. Hundred and fifty, maybe hundred and fifty-five even. Hundred and fifty-five again. Hundred and fifty to hundred and fifty-five. is 155 and I should say this is a cold engine as well. Uh, 155, just over 155. So we're very healthy. Um, the OEM is anywhere between 150, 155. Probably when it's hotter, you probably see closer to 160, maybe even 165, but that's very healthy, which is what we'd exactly expect for a new head gasket carried out. That's the end of the repair now. We've carried out our 12 mile road test, which is our standard process after work carried out to this level. Um, so hopefully you find it informative and just goes to explain a little bit more about the detail of a cylinder head gasket overhaul. Um, and hopefully we got across in the message that it's not just a, a head gasket and head bolts, lots of other gaskets, O-rings, seals, and things are replaced during the process just to give that top end um, a really good life now going forward the car is on 105,000 miles so that new set of work that we've carried out is likely to see the car out we hope it's going to do another 105,000 miles so yes please do feel free to share this video like it hit the notification bell and subscribe to our channel for more BMW content like this